I always had this complex about uh, being half Indian because I'd always heard that uh, half-breed Indian boys are are the worst because they uh, they'll get into trouble and the full bloods don't accept them and the, then the Anglo's don't accept them. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to the Storyteller where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Have you ever felt like you didn't know who you are or where you fit in? On today's program, we'll hear from a man who understands and how he found what really matters in this life and in the life to come. My name is Larry Hawkins. Uh, First name is Byron. My aunt gave me that name. Uh, born and raised in Oklahoma. I'm half Chickasaw and was raised Chickasaw. I was born in Tallahassee, Oklahoma, and that's where most of the Indian folks were born during uh, the time that I was born. I was born in 1941. Uh, my mother's name was Fulsom. Her name was Mary Fulsom. She was a full-blood Chickasaw woman, and uh, her husband was Anglo. And uh, so whenever I was born, my biological father questioned her and uh, decided that I was not his offspring and uh, did not want me to live with the family, didn't want me as a son. And so uh, my mother gave me away to the Hawkins family when I was uh, six weeks old. And so from the time I was six weeks old until I was about 10 or 11, I uh, thought that I was a Hawkins. And the only real father that I knew or called him my dad was named Bill Hawkins. He was a full-blood Chickasaw man. My mother was Dora Hawkins, and she was uh, half Mississippi Choctaw and half Chickasaw. So I always call her mom. And I, people always ask me, said, well, marry your mom? Well, no, she's my mother. She bore me, so she's my mother. I can't, uh, I have to acknowledge that because she is my mother. But it takes more than just being a mother to be a mom. Dora was my mama. I was bonded with her, and my life was with her. And uh, she and I uh, bonded together, you know. And so when my dad died, my mom said, uh, you know, I've got to make a living for these two boys. And so I uh, need to move to Ada and get a job and make a living. And so that's, that's what we did. And that's when we moved to Ada and she got a job, made a living for us. And uh, at that time... Uh, my biological parents came to my school and tried to kidnap me from my school, which uh, frightened me to no end. <laughs> and uh, I recall that day uh, just like it was yesterday, and uh, school was over, and I came walking out, and they had one of my uncles in the car who was at that time, uh, he was uh, drunk, and they had used him because I knew him very well to try and pick me up and it scared me so bad that I remember running uh, turning and running away and ran right into my principal the grade school principal and he asked me what was wrong and I told him that uh, these folks were trying to pick me up and so he told me to go into the school and I remember running uh, into the school and I would run all the way down to the basement and I found some chairs and I hid behind the chair, and I was so afraid, so scared. And uh, after a while, I heard somebody hollering my name. And when I went, it was the principal, and he said, everything's all right. And I lived about, oh, five or six blocks away, and I remember I ran all the way home just as hard as I could run. So anyway, uh, later on, we had a custody trial, and I ended up living— uh, with my mother and uh, finishing school. I had gone to school all most of my life and I graduated 
But uh, whenever I was younger, my dad didn't want me to go to school because he said uh, I would lose my Indian ways, which basically meant I'd lose my language. But my mother being the way she was, she decided I needed an education, so she took me in and enrolled me in school. And I actually was older than the kids that I went to school with and because I was 20 years old when I graduated out of high school. But I always try to encourage the kids, telling them that uh, they need to stay in school regardless of how old they may be. It's important to get your education and to finish school. I always had this complex about uh, being half Indian because I'd always heard that uh, half-breed Indian boys are are the worst because they uh, they'll get into trouble and the full bloods don't accept them and the, then the Anglo's don't accept them and I had this complex about being half Indian and I thought I had to do uh, things to show that I was tough or had to show that I was uh, angry and those kinds of things so I got mixed up in with alcohol and I never became a total blown alcoholic but I always had in mind that that's probably what I would be because of who I was but uh that's that's just a trick of society I think because I believe a person can be uh whatever they want to be regardless of who they are if you make up your mind that you want to succeed in life and so after high school, I went and joined the National Guard. I joined the National Guard when I was a junior in high school. And I spent uh, 25 years in the National Guard and Army Reserve. And uh, I was an enlisted man for six years. Then in uh, 1966, I decided to go to officer school and became an officer. And one of the funny things about becoming an officer, before I could graduate from officer school, I had to have a birth certificate, and I didn't have one. And so I went to Vital Statistics and to get my birth certificate, and I found out my name was different on my birth certificate. My name on my birth certificate at the time uh, was John Edward Folsom. And on that birth certificate, my mother had put down my grandfather, as my father, whose name was Charles Folsom, because my biological father would not accept me as his son, I presume that that's the reason why. So I had to go to the process in 1966 to get my name changed to Byron Larry Hawkins. And I always tell a funny story. I, I told my wife that if she didn't want to be married to me. Now was the time to make up her mind. <laughs> she and I got married. I married a half Chickasaw woman. Uh, we got married in 1963. My wife and I grew up in church, my wife more so than me. I grew up in the church. I knew what the church was. And, uh, and I always thought that I was a Christian because I grew up in church and went to Bible school and, and those kinds of things. And I always had a difficult time whenever I was, did something wrong because I felt like that God uh, didn't like me when I did something wrong. And so that went on for many years. And then after my wife and I got married, we got involved in evangelism. And uh, during the time we were doing evangelistic work, we realized that we had never made a profession of faith in Christ. Now, during the time that we went to church, she and I made decisions. and I. Actually, I was baptized about three or four times, but uh, baptism uh, doesn't give you salvation, and I found that out later on. So one night, my wife and I both, we, uh, and you don't have to get on your knees, but we did, we felt, we felt that we needed to, and we got on our knees and we prayed and asked the Lord to come into our hearts and save us and that confess to him that we were sinners and save us. And uh, he did. He came into our lives and he changed our lives and uh, we became Christians then. 
and we became uh, a part of God's uh, working team, I want to call it, I guess. And uh, we've always served him that way now. And uh, it's been a been a joy. Been, there have been tough times. I believe that lots of times uh, you don't always understand what God's trying to tell you, but if you feel in your heart uh, or think in your heart that uh, you're not saved, he's always willing to take you when you confess. When I was about 13 or 14, I think we had a meeting at our church, and there was three or four of our boys there, and the preacher was preaching about hell. And uh, uh, he made hell a terrible place. And as a young boy, I knew that wasn't a place that I would want to go. I mean, you know, it just sounded so bad. And so I remember coming down the aisle in tears and the minister asked me if I wanted to be baptized. And I said, yes, but I never really asked the Lord Jesus to save me. And so I was baptized but I couldn't figure out why I was baptized, but still I'd go out and uh, drink alcohol or uh, as far as smoking and those things that I thought were bad, I was still doing those things. I remember many times as a young man and drinking a bottle of beer and asking God, said, if you're really God, would you take this bottle of beer out of my hand? Would you just remove it? But uh, I didn't belong to him or I wasn't a Christian at the time, so he never convicted me to the point where I could set it down and quit. But after I became a Christian and asked him to come into my life and save me, then I began to have these feelings of uh, remorse when I did something that was against God's will. And I think that's the difference between a real Christian and a person who's not a Christian. That's a great point. If someone says that they belong to God and can do things they know are wrong without remorse, they need to check and see if they're really saved. Now I want to be clear, we're not saved by our behavior. Good works could never pay for the wrong we've done. We need Jesus. We're saved by faith in Him, in His death and resurrection on our behalf. But God enables and expects His children to live lives that reflect who He is and what He's done for us. Listen to His words from the Bible in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For the love of Christ compels us, having concluded this, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, so that they who live should live no longer for themselves, but for the one who died for them and rose again. My friend, if you're saved, live for him. And if you're not saved, why don't you turn to him now? If you would like to know more, please visit our website withoutreservation.com and click on the tab New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. If you're on Facebook, you can connect with us at Without Reservation. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there's more to the story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.